Charlie Sheen. Just mention his name and a lot of people automatically think of drug binges, prostitutes, wild parties, and bizarre behavior. You might also think about one of the funniest and most popular television comedies in recent times. And because of Sheen's most recent rant, that sitcom, Two and a Half Men, has shut down production for the rest of the season. Sheen went on a radio show this week and made some unflattering remarks about his executive producer and about his critics in general. Listen. They lay down with their ugly wives in front of their ugly children and just look at their loser lives, and then they look at me and they say, I can't process it. Well, no, and you never will. Stop trying. Just sit back and enjoy the show. So what's equally troubling is his remarks about what he calls his newfound sobriety and the so-called lack of effectiveness of Alcoholics Anonymous. This bootleg cult... Uh, you know, arrogantly referred to as Alcoholics Anonymous, is, Alex supports a 5% success rate. My success rate is 100%. Do the math. Another one of their stupid mottos, Alex, is uh, don't be special, be one of us. Newsflash, I am special, and I will never be one of you. I have a disease, I cured it with my brain, with my mind. Cured it. Sheen was referring to his self-imposed at-home drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. Well, as you just heard, the actor says it's working just fine. So for some reaction to Sheen's actions, let's bring in psychiatrist Mark Goulston. Mark, good to see you. Uh, I, I know you don't treat Charlie Sheen currently, nor have you ever, but how do you think he sounded in this latest radio rant? Does he sound delusional to you, and is there a name for this kind of behavior? Uh, I he sounds, uh, I don't think he sounds delusional. I think he's, he's like Peter Finch in Network. He's mad as hell and he's not going to take it anymore. When I think of addiction, I, uh, with people like Charlie Sheen, I think of too much too soon, dopamine and feeling exploited. Uh, too much too soon is often these celebrities, when they're young, they get, they get all these things that they shouldn't have and then suddenly they have to go off it. Uh, I actually heard that when people feel like somebody and they go back to being anybody, they feel like nobody, and it's like a real crash, and that's all regulated by something in your brain called dopamine. So they, they live on a dopamine high, and anytime they lose that, they will do anything to get that back. Uh, so sometimes they do drugs not to get high, they do it to avoid the crash. But I think what we're seeing is the reaction of someone who has felt exploited, something that I've heard from a lot of celebrities uh, is is they realize they often grow up thinking that they're being loved by the people who are exploiting their talents, and then they end up feeling used. But they don't want to give up that talent because that's all they know. They're right. actually incompetent outside that talent, and so they often uh, feel that without that, uh, they'll show the world that mm. they know nothing. But it's a little bit like trusting someone all your life and then realizing they were using you and you feel violated. Well, I there, remember one celebrity. A lot of, there's yes. certainly a lot of rage coming from him, it sounds like. A lot of anger. I mean, he went off on the women in his life, saying that uh, he forgets them immediately. He attacked his show's producer, calling him a clown and a loser and a stupid little man later in a letter to TMZ. He, he calls him a maggot. Uh, he says he's going to go on and make movies instead of working with these, quote, idiots. So is, is all of this coming from, from this, this rage and this feeling of being used? Yeah, I think the, the rage, often underneath rage is something called impotent rage, the rage of powerlessness. And often these people, when they were young, they were actually being used, but they didn't realize they were being used, and they were kind of powerless to do anything about it. And they believed all these people telling them that we love you, we like you, uh, we'll do anything for you. But then when it turns out that uh, you feel that you're being used and exploited, uh, it, it develops mm -hmm. into a rage. And then when you get the power, when, you, when you're in a position of power and you have enough money, uh, you're able to get mad as hell and not take it anymore. So how would you treat him if he was your patient? What would you do for him? Well, what I try to do is uh, I, I wouldn't try and put him in a category. I, I think there's a part of him that says, you know, when people try to put me in a category like an AA or people are telling me uh, uh, that they're right and I'm wrong, he's going to rebel against that. So I think what I would try and do is connect with him as him and then if I could develop a rapport, I would, I would push and I'd say, what's the rage about? And then he'd give me you know, several answers and I'd keep pushing and I'd say, what's, what are you really enraged about? And often if you're persistent and you're doing that to get to the bottom of it, it's like draining an abscess, sometimes what they'll tell you is, I feel like a piece of meat. I feel like I'm used. What the public doesn't know is that when you're out in a restaurant and everybody leers at you, 
uh, you know, they, they think uh, that that's okay because you're a celebrity. I feel invaded by everyone. Everyone's taking from me, and I'm not allowed to complain because I make so much money. Yeah, and really the bottom line is, if you think about it, this guy, he did show up on set, he did his lines, he didn't seem to be having any temper tantrums or trouble on the set. He's just doing his job, and he's bringing in the money, he's bringing in the ratings. So is it possible that, that he thinks what he's saying has merit, since he was a functioning addict, apparently, and was making the show happen and bringing in all that money to CBS? Well, I think it has merit to him. Uh, I think to the outside world, of course, we, we see it has no merit. And so I, I think there's a part of him that's, that's trying to have someone agree with anything that he's doing, but everyone is disagreeing with him, and the only time they agree with him is when he's being their nice little boy, acting the way that he should be, and I think that can make someone like him want to vomit. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Dr. Mark Goulston, thank you. Appreciate your insight this morning. Thank you.